Hi hey guys, welcome to our daily encounter. Where we're at in the book of Numbers and in the story of Israel is a section where the Lord is really wanting to make very clear who it is that he has chosen to serve as his priest. And this became very important after the rebellion of Korah, uh, where uh, Aaron was challenged by Korah and, and those other 150 people. And the Lord really wants the sons of Israel to know who it is exactly that should carry the priesthood. And one of these things that are brought out in our reading today is the budding of the rod. Uh, the 12 leaders were to bring their rod and along with Aaron and they put Aaron's name on it. And, and it was only Aaron's rod that budded uh, miraculously. It said it not only budded, but it also blossomed and it brought forth almonds. And so God confirmed beyond any doubt that Aaron was the man through whom the priesthood would come. And they put this rod in, uh, in the Ark of the Testimony. And it would be there with the law and then also the jar of honey that was placed inside the Ark. And for our devotion today, I want to focus on those three things. Because as we look forward to Christ in the New Testament, we see that he's the fulfillment of all three of these things. And Christ is in heaven representing these three things before God the Father. So remember, in the Ark of the Testimony, or the Ark of the Covenant, as some would call it, you had the law, the manna, and the rod that budded. Christ is the fulfillment of the law. In the Sermon on the Mount, uh, this is one of the key statements that Jesus makes. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17, he says, I do not, or he says, do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Christ was the fulfillment of the law. And as we're reading the law of Moses in our readings, we can see that those commandments actually point to Christ. They are, they are a foreshadow of Christ. And many of the the things that are being taught by Moses to the people from the Lord are things that are like a shadow of what would later come. Uh, the substance being Christ, as Colossians chapter 2 teaches us. But then also, he is the reality of the manna, the true manna. And we read about that in the book of John. In John chapter 6, after Jesus had fed thousands of people with just a little bit of food, everyone was beginning to think, this must be Moses. Uh, this is the real deal. And, and they're beginning to think of Jesus in terms of Moses. But Jesus says in John chapter 6 and verse 32, Truly, truly, I say to you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Talking uh, about himself. He's the true bread that came out of heaven. And then he says uh, in ver verse 35, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. And then as you continue to read, you see that there is a, a correlation made between the manna that the people ate, and then they died, and then Christ is the true bread of heaven, that if someone eats of him, that is, takes him in by faith, they will live forever. And so Christ is the fulfillment of that jar of manna that was placed in the Ark of the Covenant. But then he is also the fulfillment of this rod that budded. Uh, the rod that budded is a picture of resurrection. You know, a rod that's, that's taken out of a tree and taken away from the life of the tree, it, it dies. No matter how much you might preserve it, do what you can to keep it together, it's basically a dead piece of wood. And the fact that um, Aaron's rod budded was a picture of resurrection, is a picture of life out of death. And Christ, of course, is the fulfillment of that through his resurrection. In Matthew chapter 12, in verse 38, uh, it says, Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation craves for a sign, and yet no sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So, 
as Jonah was in the belly of that great fish in the sea, in the Mediterranean there, uh, for three days and three nights, so Christ would be buried, but only for three days and three nights, implying that after that time was done, that he would be resurrected. And so he's a fulfillment of Aaron's rod that budded, which was also a sign that he was the one chosen by God. And he would uh, become the great high priest after his resurrection. He descended into heaven and become our high priest, a better priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, a better priesthood than even the priest, priesthood of Aaron, as you read about in the book of Hebrews. So let's celebrate the fact that we have Christ there before God in heaven and uh, God's house in heaven. Uh, Christ is there before the Lord as the fulfillment of the law, as the true manna, and then also as symbolically the rod that blossomed, that is, or the rod that budded, uh, that is the resurrected Christ, the one who overcame death and became God's chosen instrument through which we have a wonderful priesthood. And we have him standing at the right hand of God, interceding for us, and very mercifully pleading our cause before the Lord. What a wonderful blessing it is to have Christ. So let's celebrate that today. Let's thank God for that today. And let's meditate on that as we do our reading. So with that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.